I think we're ready to talk about the first energy level. And the first energy level is going to be n equals 1. And the n equals 1 principal energy level has only a 1s sublevel. That holds up to two electrons. And it looks just like this. And inside there, and I drew it a little bigger than you'll see me draw it sometimes since it's the only one, but it can hold up to two electrons. And let's take a minute to talk about what an orbital is. So uh, each orbital that I draw, so it holds up to two electrons, we know that. Each orbital is the volume of space and it is a volume, it's not just a circle here, this is actually a three-dimensional sphere. The volume of space in which the electron spends 90% of its time. Uh, the electron or electron uh, the electron or electrons spend 90% of their time. And uh, in this course, I've said my goal is to just start on the outermost layer of the chemistry onion. And uh, anything that's true 90% of the time is good for this course. Uh, however, if you want to find out where it spends the other 10% of its time, well, the short answer is just a little beyond the space. And we've decided that the definition of an orbital should be the 90%. Um, and again, to get more details, you're going to have to take more chemistry courses, unfortunately. But this is the definition of an orbital, the volume of space in which the electron or electrons spend 90% of their time. Okay. And that's all there is for the first principal energy level. Now let's talk about the second principal energy level. <clears throat> so that's going to be n equals 2. And n equals 2 will have a 2s sublevel and a 2p sublevel. And the 2s sublevel, well, actually, what I'm going to try and do <clears throat> is draw both of them together. Uh, I've got an array of different colors here, but let me first remind you that the 2s sublevel has one orbital and holds up to two electrons. And the 2p sublevel has three orbitals and holds up to six electrons. And uh, now I'm going to draw you the picture of them all together. And let's see. So here's our nucleus. And if I was to draw this, let's just draw it like this. It's going to be a sphere again. And this is going to be the n equals 2 sphere because that's what the 2 is. And inside here somewhere, I'll just draw it very faintly is the n equals 1 sphere, but we're not focused on that right now. But what we are focused on is the p orbitals now. And yes, I do have three other colors here, so good. So let's do uh, uh, our axes labels here. So this is x and y, and we're not showing our z, but we could. So now when I draw the 2p, Note that it doesn't touch the nucleus, and it does end at the same distance from the nucleus, or very similar distance, to the same place that the, this is the, um, let's see this, this is 2s, and uh, this is 2p, mm, there we go, 
This green one is now 2px because it's along the x-axis. And each, this is one orbital, remember, one orbital for a p orbital has two parts. Um, and they end at the same place. So end at the same place. And it's true that there's a tiny bit of difference there, but for our sense, yes, this is exactly how we want to think about it. And now let's do 2py. This is 2py, and it's two parts. And what I suggest is that you think about the fact that the 2s and the 2p sublevels are two ways to stuff electrons into the same sphere. So uh, 2s and 2p are uh, orbitals or sublevels, since they're, you know, orbitals make up sublevels, are two ways to stuff electrons into the same sphere. And what we'll see is that for 1s, the sphere is too small. There's not enough room for a 1p. That's why there's only 1s. And then here's the 2n equals 2 sphere and there's 2s, and then there's 2p. And then when we go to a bigger sphere for our n equals 3, there'll be 2s, 2p, oh, sorry, if our n equals 3 sphere, there will be 3s, 3p, and 3d. Um, and I basically, as the spheres get larger and larger, there's more ways to stuff electrons into the same volume of space, and that's how we end up with more orbitals. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes, our 2pz would be coming out of the page going up, but we won't draw that this time. And let's see. Ah, yes. Yeah, that's everything we want to say about n equals 2. Um, I guess one last thing is, so n equals 2 uh, holds up to eight electrons because there's the two S's and the two P's. Good. Let's keep going. Our third principal energy level, just me, just checking in here. That's N equals three. N equals three will have three S, three P, and three D. And what we will see is that typically three, so, well, it holds two electrons max, six electrons max, and 3D has five orbitals and holds 10 electrons max for a grand total of 18 electrons in N equals three when it's completely filled. All right, so we have the pictures of the Ds. Now let's draw a picture with all three of them together so let's see, so we'll draw our axes. Uh, we'll draw this bigger, as big as we can anyway. Still supposed to be a sphere. And here's our x-axis and our y-axis. And we won't draw them all, but so, uh, and this is uh, basically the 3s and the n equals three like how I like to think about it is like you have the S and the N equals three and the three S you, there's basically like the three S is the edge of the N equals three space is edge of N equals three space. So now I'm going to draw two PX and it's not touching the nucleus and it should probably be a little, yeah, that should be much bigger, but uh, let's draw it again. Sorry about that. 
it's we're gonna go with the outer line there and that's uh, 2px and now also I'll do 2py again in red and here it comes our well I have to look at this one here we're gonna draw uh, dxy and dxy is going to look like this it's going to be four parts oh, I'm not, I think there I think four parts so this is 3 dxy and that's one orbital. That is one orbital. And the 3dxy orbital has four parts. Holds two electrons, max. And it's another way, like you can see, it's sort of, sort of in between the 2px and the 2py. And that's how what, you know, that's what I mean by you're stuffing more electrons into the same volume. You're like, well, the first two, they fill this entire space. Then the next two can go here, then two more, and then the two PZ, the three PZ. Oh, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. That should be three. These are all threes. Sorry, that's a big mistake. Three, three PX and three PY because there is 2p and 3p, Oop. there we go, um, and then the 3dxy is like, well, I maybe this is the next place I would put electrons in, it's sort of where the other electrons are not necessarily, and then all of the other spaces are like that, so it's like the bigger the volume of space, the more electrons, but the more complicated the shapes have to be to put them in. All right, so the fourth principal energy level, I don't think we're going to draw a picture of this, but we do need to say that N equals 4. We do need to say that there's a 4S, a 4P, a 4D, and a 4F. And let's make a little chart here. Number of orbitals and max number of electrons. So uh, all of the S sublevels have one orbital and have a max of two electrons. So now we know of 1S, 2S, 3S, and 4S. Three orbitals for a max of six electrons. And now we know of 2P, 3P, and 4P. Five for any D sublevel and uh, that's going to lead to 10 electrons and seven and so i wanted to show you this pattern it's one three five and seven orbitals so odd numbers double those to get the number of max electrons um, and that's and so and to do all of the periodic table the uh, highest sub level that we need is f it is true that according to quantum mechanics, there are other bi uh, bigger and more complicated types of sublevels, but we don't need to get into that, certainly not in this course. Uh, yes.